Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Mephisto. And in Mephisto you can play one to four players, takes about a half an hour to play, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Mephisto, you are basically playing as an adventurer in which you are um, in a pact with Mephistopheles. Basically he is the devil, and he has encharged you with the the quest of gathering souls in his dungeon. Now, of course, other adventurers are also in the dungeon. They're trying to gather souls as well. And by the time you've all exited, whoever has the most souls is going to be the winner of the game. In the game, you're going to be simply taking a hand of cards. You can utilize those cards, placing them down in certain lanes of the dungeon to destroy monsters and so on and so forth. You can also gather weapons. You can gather potions and spells and items. And you're trying to go throughout the deck and acquire monsters' souls. So you get these little soul points in the bottom of the card. This is a zombie here, but this plenty of different other ones as well. After you've taken your turn, everybody's going to continue doing that until the deck runs out. Basically, the dungeon gets depleted, and whoever has the most soul points is the winner. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what comes in the game, and a quick how-to as to how to play the game. So here is Mephisto in all of its glory and everything that it comes with. Basically, a deck of cards. But this deck of cards is not just the main deck. It also comes with a uh, rules as far as the uh, multiplayer variant goes. This is a two-player variant, but there is a one-player variant and a multiplayer variant as well. And you can go ahead and use this little QR code and it'll tell you how those work. It's also going to come with the uh, card that tells you how your turns take place as well as uh, you can utilize this for your favor which starts at five. So every player is going to start with five. There's a discard area. You've got the dungeon which has its different lanes and then you've got the deck of cards here. Everybody starts with three cards and there is a box that it comes with as well. Uh, for additional players too it's going to have these extra ones here. Uh, so to begin the game it's pretty simple. You're going to have a two by uh, three grid here. There's three different lanes. You've got your discard pile. You set everybody's favor to five. In a multiplayer game, you're actually going to increase the grid and put out more cards and then put the deck in the middle so that way everybody plays on one side. But for the two player variant, which is what we're going to discuss here, I'm just going to show you what it looks like for this. And it plays pretty much the same way anyway. So to begin the game, it's pretty simple. It tells you to draw a card from the deck. So you'll draw a card. You can look at all the cards in your hand and then you can go ahead and play them. You're going to be playing cards in lanes this lane, this lane, or this one. And mainly, you're going to be utilizing the different weapons weapons. The top left hand corner is going to tell you the cost of the weapon and then around the card is going to tell you its durability. You're going to have monsters to deal with and they have health and their soul points and as well as these uh, little abilities that can take place when they hit the field. This is a spell card which you can also utilize and they have costs as well. This is a freebie though which is pretty nice. So this one here is soul, uh, this one is soul feeder which is really good uh, and he's going to go ahead and place it right here. It's going to cost two cards though so we'll have to discard two cards from his hand and they'll go to the discard pile here. And now he's got his weapon out right in this lane. He can kill monsters in this lane only. He can't attack these ones here. Uh, he can play this one as well if he would like. For zero, he can attach the spell to a weapon and uh, it gets plus two. So he can go ahead and do that, making his power from six to eight. And after, you can after you've played all any number of cards from your hand uh, and put them down as weapons or spells or whatnot, then you're going to go on to choosing an action. And there's three actions. You can loot, fight, or summon. Looting is pretty simple. You're going to draw one non monster card from here and put it into your hand or uh, you can draw one from the top of the deck. The other option is to fight in which you're going to be utilizing your weapons by simply turning them to the side using a durability and then killing monsters in the row. If there's one monster you'll attack that one you can attack multiple or singular ones and you can use more than one weapon if you'd like. This has eight here. It's, he's going to choose to attack for his turn. Eight will hit the six. It will destroy it and you'll get the points as well as any benefit that it has. This says whenever you discard a monster card from your hand gain one of these favor points and so you can utilize it for the rest of the game. Note also if this didn't have enough to kill it maybe it only had four and he used to attack, you can simply use favor by spending one point for each increase you would like, and that is going to net you positive combat bonus points. So if this was four, you could spend two, which would make it six enough to destroy this monster. However, this is eight, so you're not going to need to spend any favor, and all is well. Also, this one also said when you replace Soul Eater, you can discard any monster in uh, the dungeon and gain three, so he could have also chosen to do this, gaining three favor. It's the cost of the card. It's very powerful and has a really good ability. After he's chosen one of the three, the last one is simply summoning. If you had a card in your hand, you can simply uh, swap a monster card in your hand with any uh, card in the dungeon, and you'd also gain three favor if you did that. Then you're going to simply refill it up here and let the next player go. The next player is going to draw their card, look at what they have in their hand. This guy's got a boatload of monsters, so he's not going to play anything from his hand because he can't. 
But then he can choose to loot, uh, as well as choosing to summon. Maybe, let's see here, swap a monster card in your hand with any card in the dungeon and he can gain three. I think he'll do that. So he's going to take the Corruptor. He's going to go ahead and get rid of this vermin here and put it over there. And then he's going to gain three favor. Boop, boop, and boop, putting it to eight. And that would be uh, the end of his turn. And it'll continue doing that. And basically, as the game goes on, players are going to simply keep drawing cards, choosing to play them if they would like. You can tap them uh, prior or turn them to the side prior to uh, playing card prior to uh, do choosing one of these three actions. And that will allow you to use abilities. Like this one says you can discard any non-monster card uh, from this lane and replace it with the top card of the deck. And in which case that would be used. And then you're gonna gain two if you want, so you can go up to 10. Uh, and you can utilize that once, each weapon once, or item once per game. Um, or not once per, sorry. It one, it once every turn. And the, the cost is the durability here. So it's three, when you turn to the side that's two, and then one, and finally you'll get rid of it. Uh, weapons are different though, you'll be utilizing them to do damage. So just, just as a note. All right, so that's been done. There's no monsters you can attack in this lane. So maybe he wants to take this card into his hand and put a new one out. So that's the basic idea of how the game works. You can utilize the favor for different things. Mainly it's gonna be used to do combat. You can have monster abilities out on your side of the field that will give you bonuses. Whenever something like this pops out, it says each player draws a card. So when that monster pops out, you would put the these cards here, uh, provided at the very beginning of the game, and uh, these spells as well. So that's the basic aspect of the game. When the deck finally runs out, whoever has the most monsters in front of them, as meaning that they have defeated them, is going to win the game. And you're going to tally it up based on looking at two and three, and this one has two and two, four, so he would actually win if this was what the game looked like at the end, utilizing your, your basic different rows and whatnot. So that is how you play the game uh, Mephisto. All right, let's come and talk about it. So what's to say about Mephisto? Well, firstly, as firstly, firstly, as you can tell, the artwork is very cartoony and zany. And I actually really like that for this game. I think it's because it reminds me of Dungeon Delve, the 18 card card game that I played previously. And this one harkens back to that. This is actually a better game than that. And the reason why is because you have more choice and you can play with multiple players. Uh, I like 18 card micro games. They're fun, but I like having a more substantive game. And this is basically that with more substance. Utilizing your weapons and using them as attacking abilities or utilizing items and using them to basically change the way the game works is very, very fun. There are certain item, uh, certain monsters that are really easy to defeat, like these zombies here that only require a six to attack. And then you've got really, really scary ones like the Lich and the Doom Knight. The Lich is 16 HP to defeat it, but you can activate it each uh, and each of your items and weapons uh, twice. You can activate this card and it'll allow you to use weapons twice in a turn. That's amazing. Or when this uh, Doom Knight comes into play, each player may replay one durability to an item or weapon they can control. That's pretty useful, and it gives you four soul points at the end of the game. It's very important to kill monsters in this game. That's the most important thing to do. However, you're going to need to build up throughout the game. You need to choose what is the most important thing to have. You can choose to pull from the, uh, the tableau area. You can choose to pull from the deck. You can switch monsters around. Maybe you don't have an item or a weapon in a certain area, and you know your opponent's going to defeat it next round. So you can take that monster away from them and stop them from actually defeating it. There is a lot of strategy in this game. At first, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I was going to like this game when it came in and I was reading the rules and whatnot. I like the theme of the game and the artwork is okay. I, I said I enjoy the style of artwork, but I can see how people probably may not. However, as I played the game, as I started to delve into the different strategies, and as I enjoyed the zaniness of it, I enjoyed it more and more. I never played the first single, I didn't play the single player variant, but I really enjoyed the two player, the best three, uh, three and four works just fine. And uh, I enjoyed the fact that you can change, the, you can put your weapons in different lanes, there's spells that will affect the game. And also when you defeat monsters, they will let you have abilities most of the time that will let you do certain things. Whenever you discard a weapon or item card from your hand, you're gonna gain a favor. Favor is something that's also nice because you might not have, not have the strongest weapon, but you can utilize the monsters that you killed that are weaker to grant you more favor and utilize favor in order to defeat the monsters by increasing your weapon score. Awesome, super cool. Overall, this game is super fun. It's one of those games that I think most players who enjoy a little bit of a tactical card game that has manipulative variables involved with it, as well as the fact that it's quick and simple. It's a game that kids can easily play and get into the theme, while the deal with the devil theme may be a little bit more of a, a mature style theme. It, it works well for kids because it's really not like super ingrained. It just feels like you're going into a dungeon and you're fighting a monster. So it works perfectly for this specific game. I enjoyed this game a lot. Uh, I'm sure, I, I just think that some people may not as much. I mean, the people I've played with 
uh, some of them really liked it. My cameraman was like, it's not, not for him. He didn't like the specific style of game. But for me, I really, really enjoyed this game. And I think you will too. If you're interested in checking it out, look in the description below. Find out if Mephisto is the right game for you.